Hello, beautiful beginners. So today we're going to be painting these little snowdrops, which thank you again. This was a request from um, one of you here in our little community. Thank you so much. You guys always tell me about the funnest flowers that I've never heard of. So we're going to be painting these little snowdrops. And this one here I did on um, a cold press paper. So it's got a lot of texture and um, a little bit different color because cold press, which is what I use, uh, this, this in particular is the Artistos. I always tell you about, they're not cotton, but I love them and I love that they come in this journal form. But cold press is going to absorb the water a lot more and they say that the colors get kind of absorbed into the thicker paper and it isn't as bright. I haven't really noticed that. Here's an example on cold pressed paper. I'm sorry, hot pressed paper. I don't see a huge difference, but uh, supposedly, you know, I think it's all preference, what you like, and I've just uh, always used uh, cold pressed paper. So this is what we're gonna be painting. And I'm going to be using these Paul Rubens, and I wanted to show you this because I wish I would have known this before I opened these up. Um, as you know, I just love their packaging. So fun, right? They could have just thrown this in a box. So here we go. Last night, the way these come is they actually come, this is a set of 24, and they actually come all wrapped. This is where I made the mistake. So I'm gonna give you this tip in case you ever order these. Make sure that you take the name of the paint off of the wrapper and write it down because they give you this little insert and I always paint my swatches so I can see what the colors look like, but they the, everything's in Chinese. So now I real I mean I, I know a little bit what these colors are called because they're colors I use all the time, but I don't know absolutely for sure. So just make sure when you unwrap each of these individual pans that you note the color on the wrapper. And I threw them away. So again, I kind of know what the colors are just because I've painted for so long. But if you want to know the specific colors, make sure you write those down. So I took the paper off. I've got them all in here. This is the pan set. I'm dying to see their metallics, by the way, or their iridescence. I'm not sure which they refer to them. And then I just put all of these on this paper so I could kind of see what I'm getting at as far as the colors. So we're going to be painting these snowdrops with these today. And they also sent me, so they sent me those paints, and I'm not affiliated with them, you guys, which says even more to me about them as a company. They just saw that I was, you know, using a lot of their paints, and uh, they, they sent me a really nice gift. So this is their, they sent me hot pressed paper, if I can get it out of here. There we go. And of course, it's wrapped really nice, and that's what I'm going to be using today. Now, I will forewarn you, I do not paint on hot pressed paper because it's a little too smooth for me. Um, I like cold press, I like that texture. It's just what I've used for years, so that's what I use. But I'm gonna give this a try. I'll tell you a couple things between hot press and cold press. So cold press obviously has more texture, it's more absorbent. I think it works better for um, glazing and things because I find on hot press, the paper is smoother. Um, you can't really feel it. It's, it's pressed with a hot press, just like ironing, so it's very smooth. It's great for details. If you like using pen and ink for uh, fine details, you will love this. It's great for portraits, I would think. Um, it gives you really crisp lines because when you use texture, things are gonna get inside of the little toothy fibers. So you're not gonna get as crisp a lines, but I like that. Um, I also like the texture for uh, landscapes, which I do a lot of. But today we're gonna be playing with the hot press because that's what they sent me. Um, I also feel like it, the hot press is a little bit less forgiving of some mistakes. Um, 
The, the paint does sit, by the way, on the edge of the paper a little bit longer. Let me find a brush here. Let's see. I think today, I think actually, I had this little Meaden brush here. I think I'm going to use that one. And Meaden, by the way, really crazy. I love the brushes, and they're just aesthetically pretty, but they don't give you the name. I mean, the uh, number of the brush size, which is kind of strange. I've never seen that before. You could also use your Degatos if you have that set. Those are great, too. Oh, and look at the cute little brush holder I've got here. I thought that was kind of cute. All right, so let's get going. Let me show you how I'm going to draw these. If you've never seen these cute little snow dot drops, I've never seen them in person, but they're really fun to paint. The way I'm going to approach these as far as drawing them is kind of like my typical guideline. So they seem to kind of hang down like this type of thing. So I'm gonna make the stems that way. And then for the, uh, the bud, the flower, I'm going to, this is the center where the leaves will be coming out. Hopefully you can see that, it's not too small. Let me make that a bit bigger. So we've got this stem coming out. I'm going to make just like when I draw the center of a flower, and then I'm going to have my guidelines. So I'm gonna have petals coming out here, here, and here. And now I'll just draw those in, like so. But I'm basically going to be doing this with a um, brush, so I'm not gonna necessarily be drawing those. So let's get started. Here's my hot press. I'm going, to, I, I was trying to think of <clears throat> the best way to approach these. You could do this a few different ways. You could, because these snowdrops look very light, um, they are almost white, it looks like most of them. But what I enjoy doing is kind of putting a little bit of gray and green, which I saw in a lot of the photos. I already did this little sketch. I could kind of see my placement as far as composition and it'll be that V shape that I like. And then what I'm gonna do is just wet my brush, tap it off on my paper towel, and I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm going to first do a couple, just, let's just start with some water. So you may not be able to see this on camera, but I'm going to point, press, and pick up. Point, press, pick up, and a center leaf. Now, I know you can't see that. You can maybe see a little bit of green there. And then what I'm gonna do is just with a damp brush, not wet, and I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of black, very watered down, so I get more like a gray. And then I've got my green here. Wash and rinse my brush. I've got my green here very light value, just meaning I have a lot less paint, like maybe 90% water, 80, 10% uh, paint. And I'm just going to go in and lay down a little bit in my petal here. Now, while that's wet, and this is the other thing I've noticed about hot press, that paint is gonna sit on the surface a lot longer. So for me, that's just something I have to kind of get used to. Hot press because it's got that toothy, toothy thick um, consistency, it tends to soak up the water, I think, quicker. I'm gonna pick up just the tiniest bit, very light watered down version of that black and go in and lay some of that down. And now again, this is staying wet a long time. I'm now gonna go in and pick up a darker value of my green. So let's just grab their green here, oops. There we go. Might add, oh, that's fine, I guess. I'm gonna water that down a little bit and then I'm gonna go in and create the little, really wish it was a deeper, I like olive green. So I just added a little bit of brown to that and I'm gonna go in and I've just added the little top to it. Now I'm gonna take my brush, very 
much just using the point light pressure oh I moved my paper no worries I don't stress too much about these so there you go now in a lot of times what I find with um, white flowers they will have some blue in them so I added just the tiniest bit of blue let's just water that down a bit we just want a very light value everything is a light value in these because they are basically from what i could tell i've again i've never seen these in person they're basically white now i'm going to go in with a dry brush or a just barely damp brush or thirsty brush and lift off some of that just lift some of that paint i've put in there and then maybe go in and just lay down a little bit more there so you do have a a bit longer to work with your paints because uh, it sits on the the surface of the paper a bit longer just gonna go over this stem one more time using just the tip of my brush okay so there you go let's go ahead and do another one and as you see, I lifted there. So you could take that approach on all of these is lay the paint down in a light value and then go in and lift up to get that kind of transparent white. So if I go in with a really light value of that green, I'm going to do those three petals again. So point, pressing, and down. Let me grab some more point press and open up the belly of your brush and come down there you go and then we'll do one more in the middle here which I'm going to make a little bit thicker point press there we go and now before that dries I want to go into the top here because I want to get a little bit of that spread flow wet in wet and then bring with the tip of my brush light pressure that stem down wash and rinse my brush and just tapping it off so it's barely damp i'm picking up some of that blue and going to add some of that in there now if you get too much paint like that just wash and dry your brush tap it off so it's barely damp and thirsty and just lift some of that off as many times as you need to lift there you go and I can go back in and just add a little in these really are such cute flowers I wish we had them here I'd love to see one in person they're so cute they look like they're very small too okay so we're going to go on and i think in the next one i do i might just put a little bit more blue in it so let me grab a tiny tiny bit of blue there we go i really want it watery so i'm using probably 95 percent pigment five percent water and then i tap off to get rid of any excess water you can always tap off on here too if you feel like you have too much and let's go in and do our next little petal here so point press and come down point press yeah I like this blue color there we go and I left some white space in there if you can see that so I've got a little bit of white space in there and now wash rinse my brush and before it's dry I'll pick up some of that dark green and this is where you want to make sure that you're getting rid of any excess because if you go into this with too much water it's just going to create a huge glob and a mess so I actually even had quite a bit on there more than I intended and then come down but I'm going to leave that I can always lift a little bit out if I really don't like it 
I can just take my brush and lift some of that out. Now this is where I'm used to painting on uh, that um, cold pressed paper. So I don't get as much water as I do when I'm using this paper. I'm gonna go in and just darken that a bit. So that's kind of a learning curve for me. There you go. Let's go ahead and do our other two little petals here. So I'll pick up a very light wash point, press, maybe a little bit more, point, press. I really would like to get some more blue in here. So I'm going to try and pick up, well, let's put some blue in there first. I really like that blue color. I think it's so pretty. And I didn't completely fill in every single little piece. Now going back to that dark green, grab a little bit more green here. I'm so mad at myself that I got rid of the colors. I can go online and get them, but... I did it late at night so I could paint this today for you. And making sure there's not too much water. Tap off on your paper towel if you need to. And then create that little stem. Tip of my brush, light pressure. This is where those brush strokes come in so handy for you. And create that stem. Now again, if you want these lighter, you can go in like I did here and you can lighten up these areas. Just lift out. Especially on hot press paper, you have a lot more time to move and play with the paints. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue and we'll do one right here. Now that has a lot of water, but again, this is just me getting used to playing with hot press. The water I'm used to just soaking into my paper normally. And let's do one here, point, press, and come down. So you're watching me play with something that I don't normally do. I don't normally, as I said, play with hot press. So I'm gonna go back in with a clean, thirsty brush and just pick some of that up. Pick some of that up. There we go. And go into the top. I'm gonna play with this definitely some more and try and get used to using this hot press paper. I think it'd be really great with pen and ink. Doing some tutorials on those would be really fun. And there we go. Now let's go into, let's see, let's create some, ooh, love their green. Now that looks like a tree green to me. Again, I'm gonna have to go pull up their color chart and give actual names to these uh, colors. These are my favorite too. I love those. This looks to me almost like a dark hooker's green. And let's create some long. Now I saw different um, leaves for these. And when I Googled this, um, but I'm gonna create the type of leaves that I like and I love I'm gonna add a little bit darker green. I love long flowy leaves, so that's kind of what I'm gonna do. And I'm using a mid value. So if you've been watching me, I always um, ask you, you know, do a color chart before you start and using like the really darkest value of your color and then adding in some water, just a wet brush and pull it out so you can see your dark, mid, and lightest value and make sure you use that in your painting. So right now I wanna go in 
with kind of that mid value. So let me create that again here. There we go. And I'm also going to get together a petal of the darker green because I want to use the darker green in there too. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of brown to that just to get it more like an olive green. And then I've got that tree green. So wash, rinse my brush, tap it off, pick up some of that green. And let's go in with these long flowy leaves. So point, press, and point. And then I might go in with some of the dark, point, press, release, pick up. Go over that one more time. There we go. And let me get a little bit more of that green. Let's do another leaf over here. And you know, find what, if you prefer to go from top to bottom or bottom to top, for some reason with me, when I do leaves on my right side, I go from bottom to top. And when I do them on the other side, I tend to go from top to bottom. I don't know why that is, but that's kind of what I do. So point, press, and then start lifting up just like that. I'm going to go in with some of that more of that paint and then I'll go in with some of the dark because I love how watercolors can blend like that. So go in, pick up that lighter green point, press, point, press, vary your leaves. So make a lot of different sizes, shapes, values, Let's go in maybe and do a really light value. Point, press. So that leaf is going to look like it's more in the background because it's lighter. And then we'll do some really dark ones. Point, press. Now again, you guys, I haven't seen these in person, so I'm kind of giving them my own twist. I'm also looking at some Google, Google images. They're so cute. I wish we got some of these flowers. You guys send me the cutest flowers. What was the, the one yesterday was a hellebore. That was fun. And let's see, let's go in here, point, press. I think I wanna make that one a lot darker so it really pops out in front. So I'm gonna use a lot more pigment, meaning probably 70% pigment, 30% water. And let's just get that nice and dark and watch this, how it pops out. Point, pressing, opening up the belly. There we go. So pretty. These are just the cutest little flowers. And then the other thing I think I will do is maybe just go in, let me grab a little bit, oops, I just stuck my finger in my paint. Ooh, that was a pretty color, it's kind of a deep brown. Looks like a Van Dyke brown. Again, I don't know the exact color because I threw away those little paints. Let me grab some of this blue, oh my gosh, I did it again. And I want to go in and just add in the tiniest, maybe a little bit purplish of blue highlights here. So it almost looks like a shadow there. I think that's kind of pretty. Now, typically what I noticed with um, painting on, let me hold that up for you, hot paper too, is I wasn't able to achieve glazing quite as well. I think because the water sits, the pigment sits more on top, that it felt like when I went over it with glazing, it picked up the under layer. So, that was kind of another little thing. I'm going to use some of their 
light green too. In my Lang, they call this, uh, actually this is the one they call tree green. And I'm gonna go in, now I'm just kind of playing here. These are really darker than like these ones, but I kind of want to play with some of these. And then I might just lift a little of that out. There we go. Just lifting with a dry, thirsty brush. That's pretty. I really do like the hot paper. I guess I need to kind of play with that a little bit more. Let's go in and maybe create some highlights with that bright green. That's kind of pretty. And then I want another really deep, dark leaf. Pick up some of that brown. And that gives me the olive green that I love. I'm going to darken this one more time. Ooh, that's really pretty. That's what I wanted. Point press. So it almost looks like underneath it's got a bit of a shadow. There you go. And then all these other leaves in the background, they really look like they're in the background. I think what I'm going to do too is I saw these two different ways. I saw some that had more of a yellowish, that little cup at the top there but I did mine a little bit more of a darker green. So I'm just gonna go in on one side and darken that a bit, just to give it a little bit of interest. The other thing I noticed in some pictures and others not, so I thought they were kind of cute, so I'm gonna put them in here, is it look like there was some little leaves coming off like that. I thought that was kind of cute, kind of fun. Maybe up here, looking at a photo here. They were quite a bit thinner than the other leaves, but look how cute that is. What a cute little flower. I even saw in one flower, they called them ballerinas, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Let's do this one. Point, press, like that. That is fun. Point, press. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. I'm gonna have to look in my nursery and see if we have these, and maybe I've just never seen them. And then the last thing I want to do before we stop here is go in with maybe a darker value and just deepen some of the bottoms of these. And this little meat and brush, by the way, I really do like it. I just think it's strange. They don't have the uh, brush number on there. And I'm just adding in some little vein lines like that. I'm not going to do the ones in the back because I feel like they're in the back so they maybe don't have as much detail. There we go. Darken that up a bit. So all in all this was really a fun little flower and I do love the um, 24 set of the Paul Rubens. I think they're beautiful. They have great um, vibrancy and they also were pretty transparent. Now I made these a little bit darker than maybe some snowdrops are. I'm just going in there and wanted to see how well this paint lifted. It lifted pretty good there. So it's dry and I'm just going in and lifting a kind, tiny bit and it lifted pretty well. Maybe go in. That's pretty. I'm just using a very light glaze. 
Ah, oh, those are really pretty. I like those. I'm tempted to go in and keep doing more, but I think I'm gonna stop right here. Gotta add those little curly cues. Those are just the cutest thing ever. Those are really fun. And boy, if I could fit in some metallics here, I would. But I think I'm done. That was quite fun. Uh, I love my little brush rest there. And the Paul Rubens were really great. I think I may use them. I um, really want to try their metallic palette. Um, that one looked really fun because you know me. I love my metallics. And don't forget that uh, make sure you write down the names if you do happen to pick up that um, palette of the paints before you throw those little wrappers away. They all come individually wrapped. And then I'm just gonna hold these up. I'm not sure if you will be able to see the difference, but um, this has a little bit more texture. This has a much more fine line, um, a little bit more detail. I think the hot press is excellent for botanicals if you're doing botanicals and also for pen and ink. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, try out, I'll, I'll grab a link for this. These, of course, were gifted to me. Thank you so much um, to Paul Rubens, but I love their aesthetics. I love their products. I think they're great. And um, happy painting, friends. I will see you soon.